Hello, welcome to my tech fan. Mintion company sent me the laser cam for the testing and according to their website, this is uh, the best camera for the laser engravers. I already tested their other two cameras for 3D printing and I continuously use them. With them I can uh, remotely control my 3D printers and uh, I can supervise uh, the printing and uh, similar. also I can create a time-lapse videos. Now something similar we can do with this laser cam too. Uh, we can remotely control the laser engraver because uh, with CD printers usually we transfer the files over the SD card. In, with the laser engravers uh, those uh, codes are sent over the computer so it is continuously uh, connected to the laptop or, or PC computer until the operation. And uh, it is not the problem with the shorter works but some bigger pictures engraving uh, it may take several hours and uh, I don't feel too comfortable to use my laptop for anything else during that operation. And with this laser cam, theoretically we can send the whole job to the camera. It will be stored to its own memory or, or SD card or something like that. And independent from the laptop later, it will finish the job. Also, in theory, we can uh, remotely not only control, but also supervise the engraving. <laughs> in theory, I can go to my work and uh, watch uh, the engraving from there. Theoretically, I can even attach the flame sensor and uh, if there is any problem, I will get a notification. But then what? <laughs> I can call the fire department or something like that. So take this seriously. Uh, never leave the engraving uh, without uh, attention uh, during the operation. Uh, of course, engraving is less risky compared to the cutting, but even then, I never leave the room until my uh, laser engraver is cutting or engraving. What else we can do with this camera? Well, we can create those nice, clean, time-lapse videos where the head will move to the corner to create a picture and then finish the next line. And with this, we can create nice uh, animation if somebody needs this. But what is more important, but it works only with the light burn, we can use the camera for positioning of the engraving. So we can place several objects uh, on the workbench and then in the light burn we can move our graphics to be exactly on the spot. And this is very useful with those very close laser modules where it is very hard to see the laser spot during the framing. So these features will be tested in this video. Uh, I will use it with the Equar laser engraver from my latest video because I really like this engraver. It uses the linear arrays on X and Y axis. It is not on their list of compatibility, but since it works with the laser GBL, I mean those G codes are very similar. Only I am not sure that uh, the automatic RSS pump will work over the camera because it needs a little bit different commands for this. But let's see what's in the box. This is content of the package. This is the camera itself, very similar to their V2 version, only I can see it has antenna for better Wi-Fi connection. And then we have uh, several cables, but uh, these are all USB Type-C. This is also USB Type-C, but I believe that this is the flame detector. This is the older USB 2.0 cable for connection with the engraver. And uh, these are for the mounting the camera with some tripod or we can use this clamp and this is some long arm with the ball head. And this is the power adapter for two USB plugs and the output is 5 volts, 2 amperes, but I'm not sure or is it total or each. This is the user manual and this is for the calibration of the camera. I also like this pen which is also a caliper. This is the hardware installation of the camera. This is speed up video, but I needed only maybe two or three minutes for this. And I tried to place the camera exactly above the center of the laser engraver. On the back side we have some LEDs. This is slot for the SD card, which is already inserted. And this is the plug for the power. And this is for the USB connection with the engraver. And here on the other side we have the reset button. Camera is ready for Wi-Fi connection. I heard that the camera is ready for the Wi-Fi connection. And this is the Bigler Engraver app. And already logged in. And now I can add the device. QR scan configuration. And this is the easiest method to add the camera. Yes, I heard that voice that it is ready for the Wi-Fi connection. 
and I have to enter here my Wi-Fi name and the password. Next. And now camera has to read this QR code. Okay, I heard the B prompt sound. Next. Successful connect to the Wi-Fi and I already can see the picture from the camera. That's my hand. And I can connect to the engraver and start engraving. I can see the firmware update. It's ready to update the firmware. Let's update now. The camera is upgrading. Please wait about three minutes. The camera will be restart automatically. I heard the camera that it is again connected to the Wi-Fi and I can see the current version is 1.2.4. This is the latest firmware. And um, these are the camera settings only. I will not go so detail through each. Uh, maybe just I will mention these time-lapse settings. Here we have different options, uh, normal time-lapse video or clean time-lapse video. This is what I mentioned that the head will move to the corner and create a picture. These are different video codecs and I know from the CD printing cameras that these give me better results. And then what I need from here is the camera information. Because I need this IP address, this I have to enter to my browser and then I can connect to the camera. So far only power plug was connected to the camera, but now I'll connect it with a laser engraver. And for this I have to use uh, this USB cable, because this is the plug on my unit. Mm -hmm. This side goes here. But uh, this will be in a way, so... Uh -huh. The problem is that it's a little bit too short. It would be this is one and a half meter, so I believe that two meter would be better. In that case, I could go exactly here, and the cable would not be in the way of the module or this egg gentry. I have to find some temporary solution for this. Okay, in this direction, the cables are long enough. Uh, the camera is now connected to the engraver, and also it has a power. It's connected to the Wi-Fi. And I can turn on the engraver, but it will be too loud for the background noise, so from now on I will narrate the video. The IP address I enter into the, my browser, and then uh, to check the connection I try to move the axis, and I can see that it uh, works, it's moving, so the connection is correct. And then setting the engraver, well the ECMA is not in the list, but I will just set the Atom Stack A30 Pro, this is the closest to this one and then uh, uploading the file, but first I have to prepare one. In Laser GRBL I am preparing this MTF engraving, logo of Mike Tech Farm, and quick save. And after this uh, upload to the camera. And uh, even now I can see that it doesn't like the Laser GRBL because it says that the framing button is not working if I use the Laser GRBL. Anyway, I started the engraving, but uh, it just started with one line. I tried different settings in the laser GRBL, but always it just started with this one line. And then I tried to disable the time-lapse video, and uh, after this uh, the engraving was correct, but without the positioning, so the position is approximately, but it was finished correctly. Now properly the positioning would be possible here too, if we add some uh, G-codes into the header of the laser JBL. Um, I explained this with the Falcon 2 video, but uh, I don't want to go into the details with this one. Next testing was engraving a grayscale image. Here you can see my settings. This is Padme from the Star Wars. I'm using always this picture in these uh, laser testing videos. Quick save and then uploading to the camera and I can start the engraving. And uh, unfortunately, that uh, the laser was too weak, so nothing was visible. And just to be sure that my settings are correct, I am reprinting the same uh, engraving, but now directly from the laptop. And I can see that now it was finished correctly. So the problem is not in the settings. So the same G code over the camera didn't work, and over the laptop it works. Cable goes back to the camera and uh, not too much luck with the laser GRBL, but now let's see what's the situation with the Lightburn. The same picture I imported into Lightburn and saved the G-code which was uploaded to camera. The framing worked too. This is the app, it works correctly, I can supervise the engraving, but let's see the result now. 
This is strange, but let's try the same settings, but now over the laptop. This is now the engraving directly from the light burn over the laptop. And it was finished. And what is interesting, I have completely different results comparing these two engravings. And also I noticed that this was much faster. Okay, it's a little bit different, but uh, this was in the library, but this is also using completely same settings. Maybe the problem was in the laser engraver, because that was only AtomStack compatible, but now let's directly try the AtomStack A30. Everything is rewired and connected now to this AtomStack A30 Pro, and this is the, exactly the engraver which I have in this list, as you can see, AtomStack A30 Pro. And I hope this time I will have more luck. It's finished. Hmm. So this is the same G-code but different engraver and similar problems I can see in both cases. I'm reprinting this picture again. This is the same G-code, only I turn off completely the time-lapse video recording. But I think I will have a very similar result. It's independent from the time-lapse settings. I decided to try different image modes. This is Jarvis where I don't have a gray points. This is now adjusted image where I don't have grayscale points, only black or white spots. And this time it looks like it will be okay. So in this case it works, but I don't like uh, grayscale points, because in that case you will get something like this. And now let's repeat this engraver over here, and I want to try to get some clean timeless videos. Here you can see my settings for the clean time-lapse video, 25 frames per second, and I want to change the coordinates where I want to move the head during the picture recording. And here you can see how it works, it engraves few lines, and after I think 5 seconds was the default, it moved to desired coordinate which I enter here, take a picture and continue with the engraving. And it repeats this every 5 seconds by default. Ok, it's finished. The result is very similar, but now let's see the time-lapse of this. First I have to download the time-lapse, because it was stored into camera's memory. This is the result. It looks ok, but I'm too small. The problem is that I cannot go lower with the camera, the model is in the way. I can only use a digital zoom, and this is how it looks like then. I understand that this wide-angle lens is necessary for positioning or monitoring, but uh, maybe providing another attachable zoom lens could be a solution if somebody wants to use this for the timeless video. Now let's try to use this camera for the positioning of the engraving, but I have to do some uh, rewiring. Now I'm using the data out plug and uh, this cable goes into my laptop and now it works like a regular USB camera. And now calibrating the camera, and for this I will use this pattern too. There are several steps, but everything is very detailed explained on Mintian official YouTube channel. But two most important steps are the calibrating the camera lens and then the calibrating the camera alignment. But of course before that you have to set the camera exactly above the center to see the whole frame of the engraver and the focus should be set on the top of the surface. I'm starting with the lens calibration. I'm selecting the camera here, not fisheye lens. And then I have to move this pattern to given position and click on the capture until I am finished. Next is preparing for the camera alignment. I am placing these two paper sheets here and I will stick them so they will not move during the aligning process. And then I have to set here the engraving uh, parameters. 20% is enough for this very strong laser. And uh, I am doing the framing, I can see that the frame is on this paper and uh, I will engrave here those four marker points. And now let's mark these spots in the light bulb. After this I have to select these points on the camera, one by one, this is the second point, third one, fourth one, and it's finished. And it's time to try it, and just for fun I'll try to engrave some kind of eyes and mouth on these images. When I click on update overlay, in the background there will be a picture from the camera and here just uh, I will place four circles and uh, two lines, so this will be the mouth. I know it's ugly, but just for testing. 
Well, this is really ugly. Maybe it's better if I didn't do it. But anyway, let's do some more practical testing and I'll try to engrave some kind of circle around this square. And again, clicking on update overlay and then I'm drawing just one circle and I will position it around this uh, square. And after the engraving, which was very quick, I can see that the position is correct. And depend of your calibration, but you can get the accuracy below one millimeters. And now conclusions for the end. Well, about Mintion first two cameras for CD printing. They were great, but they are more than one year old products and the Mintion continuously works on them. Until the laser cam is very new product. Sometimes we even got some kind of prototype version for the testing. And I can see it is not completely finished. I noticed several errors, but uh, all these errors can be fixed with the firmware update. And uh, the Mintian got my problematic G codes, so they will analyze them and they will fix these errors. And uh, very good news, as I mentioned, very simple with firmware update, these errors can be fixed. Everything else works great. The connection to the Wi-Fi, the hardware installation, so this, this is absolutely not problematic. Now, what are these errors? Uh, first of all, I noticed that it doesn't like the laser GABL G codes at all which is maybe not a problem because the professional users who would like to use this kind of system already have the light burn, which is more professional software. But even here I noticed some problems, but all of them are related to the grayscale images. With light art, uh, no problems at all. With the uh, grayscale images converted to the black and white points only, no problems at all. Uh, only I had the problems with the grayscale images with some gray points too. Here are some points, some, for some reason, uh, wasn't uh, engraved correctly. Even if I'm YouTuber, I don't think I will use this camera for the time-lapse videos. And the reason for that is that the picture is very small. If it would have some kind of zoom lens, in that case maybe I will get a bigger picture, but I cannot move the camera too low because of these uh, cables and air pipe. If you have different engravers, you know, there are engravers with the drag chains, in that case you can move the camera very low and it will not be in the way of the moving module. In that case you may get a very nice uh, timeless videos too, but in my case that's not an option. Now where will I use this uh, system? I don't think I will use it for the remote control because I don't do 2-3 hours engravings. Uh, I don't think I will use it for the supervision over the app because, as I mentioned from safety reasons, I'm always in the same room where the, my engraving or cutting is uh, operating. But uh, where I can use this camera is actually the positioning, especially with those very closed uh, laser modules, where it is very hard to see the laser spot during the framing. In that case, this positioning works great and uh, actually this is where I would like to use this camera. Now, there are two important things you, you should uh, consider. First of all, you have to do that calibration of the lens and alignment of the camera very accurate. But after this, you cannot move it. This is a problem for me, because this means you need a dedicated space for your, this engraver. Um, since I don't use it regularly, all my engravers are stored vertically when they are using less space. But this means every time I would like to use this system, I have to mount it and I have to do that uh, calibration process uh, all over again. This is my experience with this laser cam. If you have some other experience, you know, few lines in the comment section. I hope this was useful. Thank you for watching and happy and safe engraving.